this is obviously what you do, but it's kind of what you used to do. You don't yeah, yeah. work at Whanganui hos- ah, Hospital, sorry, museum, <laughs> museum anymore. anymore. No. Well, when I was at Whanganui, uh, I was finding that it's, it's frustrating being in a small regional museum because it's very hard to reach people. That no, not many people come to Whanganui. You can put on exhibits, but not many people are going to see them. And I was passionate about conservation and outreach and trying to communicate some of the science and work that's being done in New Zealand to the public. Uh, so I'd sometimes write articles for the newspaper. But again, the Honganui Chronicle, bless its heart, um, doesn't have a huge readership. So I was thinking, well, how can I get some of this research and facts out there? And realize, oh, you know, Wikipedia articles. Anyone can edit a Wikipedia article mm-hmm. and you can cite New Zealand research in there and update them and improve them. And so I started doing that in my spare time and then started looking at, you know, well, geez, the coverage of New Zealand on Wikipedia is pretty bad. So we organized a community Wikipedia editing group to just to work on the Whanganui-related pages and try and improve those. And I organized a couple of just get volunteer get-togethers and meetups and edit-a-thons and whatnot and was realizing that the stuff I was doing there was actually having probably more outreach impact than what I was doing during the day, doing, writing for the newspaper or doing exhibitions. Um, and at that point, and I'd been editing Wikipedia for a few years then, I realized that the Wikimedia Foundation, which runs Wikipedia and all the other projects like that, mm-hmm. have an annual grants process. They're all funded by donations, but they always get more money than they, they, can, they need. So they use it to try and get uh, folks around the world to engage with communities better, particularly developing countries. But I also realized no one, they never funded anything in New Zealand before. So I just applied for a grant and said, I would be happy to be a Wikipedian for a year and just work with all institutions all around New Zealand and be on the road uh, and try and educate them as to how they can engage with Wikipedia better mm-hmm. and teach, train people up and run community events and whatnot. And they said, yep, sure. So I'm, my official title is Wikipedian at large, which is, I think, the first time they've ever had that. They, they, they thought that was a pretty cool job title. So like, you were the, you basically, for want of a better word, yeah. working for or on behalf of Wikipedia, yeah. teaching people about how to use it and yeah. then helping them use it. Yeah. So you're kind of training people to be the ones who edit the pages. Yeah, yeah. it's all edited by volunteers. Yeah. Uh, but we don't have a big volunteer community here in New Zealand doing it. Um, so we're trying to just catch up by running public events and meetups and training people up. But at the same time, I'm also embedded inside an institution of one kind or another. So I've been in Dunedin a few days now, and I'm working at the Otago Museum. Mm -hmm. And they have a huge collection of photographs of their beautiful collection objects, which are currently all just sort of sitting on servers. They're not all available. But we are working to do a bulk upload of just today. We're going to work on doing hundreds of them and releasing them into Wikimedia Commons under an open license so anyone can use them and then they can then be used on Wikipedia pages or for anything else. So a lot of it is... So it becomes kind of an open source resource. Exactly. So i am currently been working with institutions like the National Library and the Auckland Museum to help them navigate this whole process because it's pretty new to many museums. They're just not used to this idea that there's now easy ways that you could make all these beautiful collection images open mm-hmm. and give them, you know, get the public in New Zealand using them. And so I walk them through that process and they have to figure out their copyright policy and we do a bulk upload. And generally it's been pretty positive. There's been lots of institutions that are really intrigued by this and are trying to move in this way. So and I, I guess if it's places like museums, etc., they're not really a commercial entity. No, so, no. so making them open source, making them available yeah, is, yeah. as you say, that's kind of spreading the word and reaching more people. That's the primary goal, and many of these are publicly funded as well, mm-hmm. so there's a good case to be made that if the public have paid for the collection of all of these photographs, all their scanning, digitization, they actually own them, and so they have, you know, they've got a right to be able to see and use them, and previously it's been a, a problem because museums are just, you know, a building with stuff in it, and you used to just have to go to the museum to see anything there, but that cuts out a huge audience from not just New Zealand, but all around the world. Um, and so many museums are now in gallery, art galleries and libraries and archives are embracing this as suddenly they thought, this is a tool, this is how we can meet our mission, which is to make our collections as available as possible. And so they've hooked into Wikipedia as a resource to do this, but also sites like Wikimedia Commons, which is the mm-hmm. image library for Wikipedia, mm-hmm. all those you know, f- over 50 million openly usable images there no. and projects new now like wikidata which is an open structured database it's like the card catalog of wikipedia 
So libraries are really interested in this as well because they love you know cataloging stuff. But every different library and museum has a different catalog system, and they're realizing this open, freely editable thing called Wikidata can link those all together. So I've been talking with a lot of institutions about getting in that too. And what are you uh, completely completely sideways? Uh, question, yeah. but because it's Wiki, what do you think of the WikiLeaks situation? Do you have any kind of thoughts around that? I don't know, it's got nothing to do with Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. I often sometimes people say, what do you think about WikiLeaks? WikiLeaks, I mean, you know, Wikipedia's not going to sue him, but that has nothing to do with Wikipedia or but the Wiki's, Wikimedia Foundation. The word Wiki is now sort of in the yeah, general yeah, yeah. Uh, it, lexicon, it, meaning, yeah, yeah. meaning dictionary or meaning well, group li- of ideas. Literally, you if you want to say what Wiki, Wiki is a Polynesian word. Yeah. If you, uh, Jace, if you look up Wiki, Wiki, bus, show us a picture of a wiki wiki bus um they're the buses that at honolulu airport there you go wiki wiki shuttle they're the buses that take you between the terminals in honolulu airport because wiki is hawaiian for quick and so wiki wiki bus is a super quick bus um and when they were developing software that let you edit web pages quickly mm-hmm. they called it wiki software that's the classic wiki wiki bus picture um, yeah. The irony being that this picture is uh, on Wikipedia. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's no, a wiki, wiki, wiki on wiki. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so this became, I mean, some of the open software people love this because it means you can just set up a site and then anyone can come along and edit it. And that's how it all started. So, And still people, you know, you'll find a wiki on a company's intranet or something like that if they're developing their health and safety policy. Yeah. You know, everyone can edit it. And the idea of making an encyclopedia that ran using a wiki back in about 2001 that was seen as a complete ridiculous idea like how can you possibly make an encyclopedia that anyone mm-hmm. can can edit um and it was you know it was a, it was a bit of a joke for the first couple of years and then it just took off and went bananas and there's some nice graphs there on the size of wikipedia and how many millions of articles it now has um yeah it's pretty impressive so but that uh, word, that word, wiki. Now, like I, yeah. I mean, I'm, I don't know if you're into it, but a lot of people are excited about Game of Thrones starting next week. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, you look up Game of Thrones, and it'll have a wiki on the character, and that's yeah, just yeah. how it's referenced now, meaning a a, a storage of information on yeah, this yeah, character, yeah. not uh, necessarily on Wikipedia. No, no, no. Yeah, anyone can start up a wiki on anything. They can just download the software and start it up on their own site. The key thing about a wiki is that any fan can edit it. So if you, right, it's not the official website for Game of Thrones it's a fan based one yeah. so the Game of Thrones wiki sorry is very cool and that Game of Thrones has thousands and thousands of fans who have read all the books and memorised them and if there's any mistake or any problem in that article you'll have a hundred people immediately coming in to fix it so that's the power of a wiki is that if you have enough editors and Wikipedia has about a quarter of a million regular editors they will all collectively pull their expertise to iron out bugs or fact check things or put references in. So that I didn't know that. So that means if you're going to officially kind of be a wiki, whatever yeah. that is, yeah. it needs to be editable by the people using the that's, site. Yeah, it's the power of it. The uh, more the uh. more people, the better. So that's why Wikipedia surprisingly works as well as it does. How accurate is Wikipedia? Pretty good. I mean, I think it's comp in, in the areas that the mainstream areas, yeah. like the where you'd expect an encyclopedia to be working, yeah. it's absolutely comparable with a traditional encyclopedia or a textbook in its accuracy. As soon as you wander off the mainstream or you get out of the comfort zone of many of the editors who are pretty Northern Hemisphere American types, Mm -hmm. it gets worse. So the coverage of New Zealand is not as good as it should be, Uh, particularly, you know, the coverage of other countries, non-Western countries, not as good as it could be. And the English Wikipedia, I mean, there are Wikipedias in other languages too. It's in about 300 languages. So that's the big problem with New Zealand is that we would like the articles covering us, which is a pretty much our face on the world, yeah. to be as accurate and deep and, and detailed as the ones for the UK or North America. And uh, they're not, and it's, it's a lot of gaps and problems. It's just because we haven't had that big base of volunteer editors. And that's what, that's what you're kind of well, trying to correct. I'm, I'm trying to build that up. Is it know. your full-time gig? Like that's your yeah, paycheck, yeah, yeah. that's your everything? That's my paycheck for I'm on a one-year contract, and I'm actually about nine months into it. So, so you've got a few months to go. A few months to go. So and you go to a location like you've come to Dunedin, and you're, yeah. it seems like you're here for a couple of weeks. I'm actually here for the rest of the month right. and right into May. Um, and I'll be based at the museum there, but I'm also running some uh, workshops and presentations at the university and at the anatomy school and running some public Wikipedia events too. I'm going to have an editathon on New Zealand prehistory, you know, my personal passion, uh, and one on the history of Dunedin and the Otago Museum. And anyone can come along to those and learn how to edit and take part. So, And I know if people Google the events finder and look, look at yeah. your name, that, that um, editathon <laughs> is up there as well. Yeah, um, yeah. What about on Wikipedia when, why, 
why do some pages get locked down? Oh, yeah. Like you can't edit them. Well, you can still. I mean, there's a sort of semi-protection which can be imposed on a page, which means that to edit it, you have to have had like a been on Wikipedia for a few days, mm -hmm. right? And you've had to have made about 10 edits, which seems a pretty low bar. But actually that screens out about 90% of the drive by vandalism. Right. So vandalism on Wikipedia is mostly just like school kids trying to put a rude word in there and they say, oh, look, look, look what I did, mate. I put rude into and 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 they but that's often actually caught by software within about thirty seconds or so that'll take out most of the swear words and anything slightly more sophisticated a human editor will usually on vandalism patrol as it's called will be just automatically checking edits each day and seeing if anything looks a bit dodgy they'll, and that's all voluntary yep all voluntary wow there's thousands of people just doing vandalism patrol. And they take out the thousands of, of dodgy vandalistic edits. But if there's a page that's really in the news um, or it's about Donald Trump or something, mm. they will semi-protect that page just to cut down on that random vandalism. And they can ramp up. Well, they can even lock down a page for editing if there's something, some massive um, fight going on at the moment about it. Like some kind of attack on it for some person who's yeah. like, like a, like a, I was trying to think of someone's name, like a Ben Shapiro or something gets a yeah. massive attack on a yeah. thing, they yeah. lock it down. Yeah, and the editors, that's all just, again, that's that's not from the top down, that's just a bunch of editors, or, which is anyone who just types, hits the edit button, get together and so, discuss so is it. So there a, a hierarchy of editors, so there's like... The not top, really, top no. Down. No, so you're an editor, and then when they realise, at some point they realise we need to have people who can also delete pages delete articles as well as create them and so we had to create this class called admin which is just someone who has the power to delete a page or block someone from editing boot them off wikipedia for a bit that's about the only power they have and that's just voted in by other editors mm -hmm. someone puts their name forward and says oh i've been around wikipedia for a few years now and they can anyone can look at their track record and say yep you've been a pretty good editor you've helped solve problems and been constructive and never gotten fights uh, we'll push the admin button and you can become an admin and now you've just got this slight extra power to block people. And so if there's a big problem in a page, someone will call in an admin, whatever. we've got a couple of admins in New Zealand, um, and they'll just come in and try and sort it out. Usually it's diplomacy rather than anything else, but sometimes persistent vandals can just get blocked. That's about it. That's about the hierarchy. Um, everything else, the Wikimedia Foundation is pretty hands-off, though they just run the software and the servers. Yeah. And so all of these, there's lots of you know, rules and guidelines and style guides and acronyms. It's actually quite thoroughly developed, but that's all been developed from the ground up by the random volunteers. So it's quite a thing. So it really is at. a community and a community yeah. looking after it. Yeah, yeah. It's every and all of the structure has been has grown organically from um, just the random volunteers, thousands and thousands of volunteers, which is a really interesting thing to think about because they started off trying to write Wikipedia as an encyclopedia, the mm -hmm. way you would normally, like you get a an editorial board and you commission a bunch of articles from experts and so forth, and it was a disaster. I mean, it took so long; they just couldn't get anything written. Um, and but that's the only way that people knew to develop a huge project like that. Mm -hmm. So if we look at your Wikipedia article, Pat, oh, for example, so can we just say first of all, yes, I was working, uh, you know, several years ago on News Talk ZB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How this page got up? Okay. I, I didn't. I didn't put no, no, no. it there. No, and you can't. It just popped no. up. Yeah, it does. Now, you why? Were on what, Street. <laughs> <laughs> Where do Wikipedia articles come from? That's right. So this is a stub. This is a pretty basic sketch. Of an article, and it's, it's got, out, and it's out of date. Yeah, it's out of date. I know. Now the thing is, first of all, you can't oh, mess with that. What just happened then. You just, you just made it narrow. If you could oh, wide, okay. if you could narrow that, um, Jason, make the text a bit larger, that'd be great. Uh, so I can read it. Yep. So it's pretty sketchy. Um, now this would all be sourced from publicly available information. So any interview that's been done with you, or you've been covered in the new in the news, or something like that. Scroll down and let's look at the uh, references, Jason podcasting acting yeah there's not much there's a public statement about leaving radio rima in 2012 there's a shortened street actors database but there's almost no, no decent published information so it's pretty sketchy but what would happen is that someone would have had a list of say new zealand broadcasters with a couple of citations for them and they would have just run down the list and created articles boom 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 automatically as soon as someone reaches a certain level of coverage in the media then there is enough publicly available sources to build a biography of them in Wikipedia, and eventually some volunteer will get around to doing that. 
It's just oh. part of the job. It just happens, sort of happens automatically. Now yours, I mean, you can't touch it, mate, because you've got a conflict of interest. No one's allowed to mess with their own Wikipedia article. Otherwise, how how do people know? Well, how do people know? Sometimes they they create an account and they log services and they just say, "Oh, I know everything about myself, and I'm going to fix this," and they'll just get blocked. But I mean, it's possible you could try and be it, try and get away with doing it anonymously and whatnot. Right. If you're a bit of a sado, so I so I can't do anything about this. You should probably. What if I want it removed? Uh, you can actually petition Wikipedia, but they're going to say, well, there are special cases in which people can get an article taken down. But generally, if you have a public profile, uh, then um, you're going to get a Wikipedia article appearing eventually. It's so like what, saying, if you, what if you're like, man, at some stage I had a very, 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 very insignificant and small public profile yeah. working as a talkback host, sure. right? Yeah. Like, like, like bottom of the barrel, youngest person at ZB, yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing about me said no, profile, no. but now I don't. Yeah, well, you know, historically, I'd say this page, no, not wanting to, to, to rain on your on your wiki parade, this is a pretty marginal article, and I would say if I'd saw, seen this proposed, I, it's been flagged uh, back in 2017. They're saying, man, there just aren't enough re- references here. Yeah, we should get rid of it. Well, you could, you, um, anyone could come along and flag this and say this person's not notable in the terms of Wikipedia. There's not enough published about. I agree. An article. <laughs> so they and sometimes <laughs> they will. They just when the podcast gets you and <laughs> thousands. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I would it could go two ways. We, we could either say, oh man, just flat, just just nominate this for deletion because there's not enough published. And that would probably be approved, and they and they just they they take down thousands of pages a day because oh, there's no. We'll do that. You could, well, or, or, or you know, jump, or someone and... would come along and say, "Well, no, you know, Pat has had some profile, and maybe there was an interview with you for the local paper or something, or maybe there's something, some coverage. Maybe you have crossed that notability threshold, and there should be an article about you just as a part. I just figure. think it's weird. It's weird, isn't it? I know. I, I think got, it's someone weird. made one about me last year. Because I suddenly was being interviewed by the newspapers about this gig, and so someone as a favour said, "Oh, well, you have you? to be on it. You're a Wikipedia." Well, no, no, not necessarily. I hadn't reached that 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 threshold, um, and so now I've got one, and it's basically accurate. That's fine. I mean, I just try not to look at it because I've. What I could do is if you. Look at that. Look, There's, you've even got a photo. See, I know, mine, I know. Mine's so insignificant, I don't even have a photo. Well, you know, I would say that that, that was from a fo- photo session they did for North and South um, when they covered me at the Auckland Museum. So yours is, yours is significant. Yeah, that's Look right. Look at all that. It's got references and everything. And the, and I what I did is I went to my talk page, which exists behind the scenes, and I said, uh, okay, this all looks cool. Um, if you wanted, if anyone wanted to expand this article, here's some actual references that are cover more stuff than there's a lot of stuff missing from here here's some references go for it or don't i don't care and i just walked away and that's it so that's about the only interaction you should have with your wikipedia article if you think there's inaccuracies or problems there is a talk page and you can leave a note there and say this is wrong or this misses out something quite important here's a reference that any editor there's there's no there's no mention of the department of conversation on your wikipedia (laughs) page i think i'm going to have to correct that after we go off yeah well no that's the thing you know there there could be a link to this it's interesting to hear how accurate it isn't because i know when i was when i was working in talkback I remember talking about Wikipedia and someone was all like, but Wikipedia is not necessarily true or accurate. And yeah. I actually said, I don't disagree with you. And mm. I said to people, I've got a page. I don't know where it's coming from, but I've got a page. Now, yeah. my challenge is before I come on here tomorrow, go and change it. <laughs> and it said things like I was an astronaut and all these things. Yeah, changed. Yeah, and, yeah. and eventually it got corrected. It corrected itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it, it was very... It didn't correct itself. Oh, it got corrected? Another, another volunteer oh, okay. editor would have seen those changes. and, and But it two, lasted a little while. It would have because your page is probably not in the spotlight by anyone much. Of course. <laughs> right. So the more prominent you are, the more watch lists you're going to be on, yeah. the faster those changes will get reversed. But, you know, in New Zealand, again, we've got a pretty small editor base and they're the ones who have to go around and go, oh, bloody hell, and revert all these changes. And normally, within 24 hours, they'll catch most of the stuff. But it just adds to their workload. So I tell people, like, please don't just vandalise pages for fun just to make a point because some poor volunteer has to come and do this now in their spare time and fix it all again. It doesn't take very long, but there's, there's quite a bit going on. So, so um, well, there's, a, there's a podcast section on your Wikipedia page, so I, I think it's ripe for having the Department of Conversation added. Yeah, to that. but you guys should probably hold back on that. I mean, what I would do is I'd I, say I wouldn't do anything. What, what I'm going to do is, um, and even the word podcasting is, is spelled wrong. You know, podcast doesn't take it into cap C. So no, what I would do if I was in, if I didn't know you and I was in, I saw this page, so okay, I was first going to Google you and see do we have any coverage and reliable sources that we could use to improve this. Uh, I'd flesh out some no, of the sections, yeah. but don't, don't. Let's not put this out there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want people to do that. No, let's. no, no, no. But 
That's the thing. I mean, and it's, so it's a bit of a mixed blessing, isn't it? Uh, but generally, I find that's the consequence. If you're a public figure, then it's the same as saying, I don't want any media to cover me. I don't want to be talked about in the newspaper. I don't want any. You know, so I don't, we, don't want to be interviewed. We should think of Wikipedia now yeah. as basically a reliable source of media. It's basically a type of media yeah. coverage, or at least it builds on media coverage. And the same way, if you had an institution and you said, "I don't want this institution mentioned in the newspapers," yeah. Well, good luck. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, right. what's that? It's not your decision. Yeah. You know, or as a particular scandal that happened, you say, "I don't want news journalists to write about this scandal." Well, the journalists will write, decide whether or not they're going to write about it. It's the same with Wikipedia. If there's enough sources available, you know, it'll be covered. So before we shoot off, Jason, can you please just Google Events Finder and put Mike Dickerson's name in there? Just Google those two. Oh, there you go. We've got it. Right there. Isn't Look at him. He's, he's, he's yeah. brilliant, brilliantly hard. So, it, it's uh, easy enough to find me if you Google um, Wikipedian at large because yep. I'm pretty much the only one. And are these details for what you're doing in Dunedin on your page, which is what? Yeah, yeah, Giantflightlessbirds.com? Yeah. Or just, just go to Wikipedian at large and you'll see there's a calendar of all the stuff coming up there. But yeah, there's definitely some things that are being organised have through you, the museum. Have you been? Have you done one of these editathons in Dunedin before? We did one uh, a couple of months ago okay. on, for new, in the public library on. Well on, attended. Yeah. No, not particularly. So we're hoping to get the word out a bit more. We were just focused on the New Zealand, on the artist community because, I mean, I work with artists a bit, and the problem with artists is that they maybe have no public profile at all. Right. And they they might have a Wikipedia article, but it's got no photo of them or photo of any of their work. And that's because of copyright reasons. The artist is the only person who can authorize a photo of their right. work to be released. So you really have to talk to the artist directly, explain copyright to them, because many artists don't even understand that, and say, look, we'd love to put some, a gallery of your work on a Wikipedia article about you. If you would like to authorize a couple of photos that you choose mm -hmm. to be released into the commons so mm -hmm. anyone can use them, they have to be clear that those could be used by anyone for anything. But, and that's a trade-off, uh, but generally artists are quite happy to do that because they realize that this then gives people a chance to see what they do. And those are actors like, it's like a publicity press kit or something. Yeah. Um, and so I would, my goal is I'll be working with, uh, particularly at Christchurch with the art gallery there, we'll be doing a couple of public events. We'll be trying to get the art artist, artistic community in and explain how Wikipedia works to them, how all this happens. And then say, okay, now come along on Sunday. We'll do a hands-on event. You can bring your photos. We'll work on we'll have the Wikipedians there to help you make a page. And we're going to try and increase the coverage of New Zealand artists as much as cool. we can. See, that seems like a valuable and yeah, yeah. and valid and warranted reason to have a page. Exactly. Some dick who did radio for a little while 10 years ago that doesn't. <laughs> okay, but now think about this, though. In 50 years' time, people will be trying to reconstruct the history of radio in New Zealand. And one of the main sources will be Wikipedia articles. Mm. So it's really is a quite an important project. People will be concerned. So be every all these figures all linked together and someone will be trying to write the history of New Zealand radio and there'll be lots of names in it and your name will be one of them. And mm. many in many well, cases I don't know about that. <laughs> oh no, 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 no you'll be you'll be surprised. So it's important that some of that stuff is caught and captured in Wikipedia so that people can start to piece together this history. Because in many ways, Wikipedia is like the first draft of history now. Right. So we look at something like the Christchurch mosque shootings. Mm. That Wikipedia, a Wikipedia article on those shootings appeared about an hour and a half after the first news reports. And it's been, last time I checked, it had been worked on by about 650 different wow. editors. It's about 5,000 words long now, with about 300 references. And it's been furiously improved and worked on. But from uh, the first day or so of the coverage of that event, that was actually the most reliable source because it triangulated and brought together multiple different media and tried to only bring in stuff that was verified by a couple of different media sources. So so one news reported X, um, yeah. three news reported Y, yeah, yeah, news yeah. source would be reported Z, and then some volunteer tried went, to put it well, together and yeah. we'll put it here. Yeah. That's that's a really interesting, insightful yeah. thought. So 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 actually on the day of yeah. uh, on the day of that it was terrorist growing, attack. growing furiously. And that was actually a and the news media know this. They know that if there's a big happening current event or a natural disaster, then the Wikipedia article is actually not a bad place. To look, so you can see it's pretty substantial. That's ginormous. Yeah, I know. And how uh, many? Look at that. It's got two hundred plus. Three, about three hundred odd references last wow. time I looked. I know. So it's pretty well sourced from publicly available sources of knowledge, 
And in the behind the scenes, there were massive fights going on about what should and shouldn't be included. So everything was thoroughly thrashed out. Like, should there be a, a still from the, the shooter's footage there? And they said, no, absolutely not. First of all, it's not copyright. They don't own the copyright. Um, secondly, they tried to say, should, we have, should the shooter have his own Wikipedia article? And he said, no way, man. Um, so there was a lot of real passionate debate going on. Was, you got some of these free speech people. So a question about that then. Is the, is the person's name even mentioned, the yeah, shooter? Yeah, mentioned, yep, absolutely, okay. because it's mentioned in lots of media, not, okay. not in New Zealand, but overseas. Oh, yeah, uh, but, he does, but he doesn't have his own Wikipedia article, and I would be resistant to that. Because so if someone came along to make a Wikipedia article for him... I think it would be probably rejected, because there are clear guidelines on this. If someone's only famous because of one crime that they did, they don't get a Wikipedia article. Right. They get mentioned as a paragraph in the write-up of that and crime. And that's when sometimes you see in Wikipedia, you Google a name or Google, yeah. your Wikipedia search a name, yeah. and it doesn't go to their page, but it goes to an yeah, article about exactly. them. So I did one, I, I, I watched a documentary last night about uh, this weird goings-on in America, Gypsy, someone, it's, it's a girl who's, yeah. who, uh, uh, Munchausen by proxy, her mother, and then oh, yeah, her and her yeah. boyfriend killed her. And I, I Googled one of the names and it came to an article. Yeah. It didn't come to her page, it yeah. came to an article about the crime. Exactly. So that's the general rule with Wikipedia is they're trying not, they don't want to create this amazing, you know, immortalize this person as a special person in history because this is just some nobody who happened to do a terrible thing. The event is more important. What I've been doing in the role of Wikipedian post that event is I've put out a call for public to donate photos of the aftermath, the follow-up of the shootings. And we started off with there were four, now we've got about 150, I think. And they're their own they're, photos, aren't they? Their own photos, their own photos, because, so they own the copyright for them. Yeah. And I've encouraged them to donate them, sign them over to Commons under an open license. Yeah. So we have photographs of the vigils and the floral tributes and the street graffiti and the signs and... Christchurch City Council um, said, yeah, sure, you can use that photo of Jacinda Ardern and the hijab. Yeah. And so, and I'd like other media to consider that as well. So that's actually a, that's a pretty big job for you because I was thinking, so I, I went to the Dunedin Mosque and took a photo of the flowers and put it on mm. my Instagram. That's oh, the cool. kind of thing that you could... You could donate that photo to Commons right. as well. And so eventually what we'd like to see is the Wikipedia article will have a gallery of all the different floral tributes at different places. It'll have a gallery of street art and graffiti reacting re to the tag have a gallery of public appearances of politicians and follow up to it. And those are the images that start to define the event because those are the things that then go into the permanent record and get pre reproduced. Is, oh, this, is, this, is this sort of like a Wikipedia version of Creative Commons basically? Under the same exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Creative Commons licenses is what you use for Wikipedia. I was about to ask, is it the objective of? But I think what would be a better way to say it is, do you think eventually Wikipedia will become the biggest source of news because mm -hmm. I hear you saying that about the the, the mosque shooting yeah, will, yeah, will there yeah. be a Wikipedia page about the final of the Rugby World Cup coming up that'll be up 20 minutes after that Rugby World Cup finishes and it'll be ahead of all the news sources well you should probably look up Rugby World Cup in Wikipedia because I don't follow the sports pages at all but yeah I'd say there would be like so that, what about so real time in, in the real, real time in real time though I would probably rely on those news reporters but um, and there'll be there'll be one for each year of the Rugby World Cup. There should be one for the 2019. So, you know. Um, well, do you think that will turn into the biggest source of news, Wikipedia? Yeah, well, so here we go. 2019 Rugby World Cup. There it is. Now, the real-time results are always going to be sh broken first by the actual media. Yep. But if you're looking in uh, two weeks later, that's disappeared from the news pages. Yep. But the Wikipedia article is going to have all of that stuff summarised and that becomes then the long-term record. So it's a synergy. You know, you have the media cover everything immediately happening now. They're there on the spot. Wikipedia picks up the pieces, puts it together and makes the long-term record. It's reference. almost like a manual RSS feed. It's bringing everything yeah, together yeah. and it's going, here it is. Here, you've seen the true, information true, from all different true. outlets. Yeah. Here it is all combined for you. Yeah. So that I weigh, that I think is the the Wikipedia is the long term, the media is the short term. They both rely on each other because the journos in a year's time when they're trying to write remember what happened in the Rugby World Cup, they're going to be going to Wikipedia and using that and relying on it as a source. And it will be pretty reliable because it relied on their reporting from the year before. Well, just on their word source, um, I'm just curious and kind of almost a little bit of a tangent, but. Sure. Uh, school articles, you know, high school writing reports, obviously, you know, not with not getting into plagiarism and just copying Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 
can obviously Wikipedia itself is referenced, and so obviously they should really probably just use those references. As That's references. right. Yeah. But yep. can you know? Is it getting to the point where Wikipedia itself can be used as a reference? No, it can't, and that's something that I try and impress upon schools and kids. But the kids should all be reading Wikipedia and using it, but as a starting point in their research. So Wikipedia, a good Wikipedia article will have lots of references at the bottom that back up every fact, and those are the sources that mm. we should be getting kids to use. If it doesn't have many references, like Pat, like your article, <laughs> I would say I'd say it's definitely unreliable. It is definitely unreliable. And I, I, exactly, and that's because it's not based on anything. Now, I, when I talk to teachers, some teachers say kids who mustn't use, mustn't use Wikipedia at all, and I think, oh, that's come on, man. It's like saying, would it be fair yeah. to say, be cautious using Wikipedia on mm -hmm. smaller, yes, smaller stories, yes. but on larger stories, it's going to be a fairly reliable source. Yeah. And so, on the I'd, 2020 American election, sure. it's going to be a pretty good source. Yes, on, for example, Cluther's by-election, not so good. 1972, yeah. not so good. And you can generalize more and say that you can look at a Wikipedia page and you can gauge its reliability. Number of references, there are little icons in the corner that tell you if it's a featured article. You can go to the talk page and see how it's been rated. So there are lots of ways of, of coming up with um, an estimate of the reliability of an article. Number of references, number of different editors. We should be teaching kids those techniques yeah. to help them gauge whether they should trust this article or not. And we should be teaching them the same techniques for anything they read on the internet, of course. Every web page they should be looking at. Who wrote this? Where did it come from? Should we trust it? But I would go even further and say, hopefully we're teaching kids to apply those same critical eye to their own school textbooks and what their teacher's telling them, right? I, I had actually had, a, I had this conversation during the week with some friends actually about uh, how media literacy should become a, a, it should be a subject in primary school almost now, definitely yeah. high school. Oh, yeah, yeah. Being able to discern fake news, being able to reference and find yep. out if something's yep. believable, you know, being literate in what, and, and the thing that we is the main thing that we consume these days. We yeah. need to be literate, aren't That's it? That's very true. Um, and the thing is that the teachers that the kids are learning from grew up in a, a generation ago in a situation where we were information poor, when you had to know where to find something, you had to know how to, how to go to a library and find an encyclopedia and find a fact. And we're, it's moving flipped now. We're in an information-rich world yeah. where there's too much information and a completely different set of skills are required is how do you filter through the big flood of information coming at you and assess reliability. Um, so it's super easy now to find out anything you want about anything, but now you have to use that those media literacy skills. And that's a, that's a generational switch, and I think some people are still fighting you know the last war as they say it's almost it's almost the complete opposite i mean you could yeah. you could trust the uh, encyclopedia britannica because of all the work that went into it mm, mm, um yeah. but two years after it was produced parts would be out of date yeah everything is up to date now but as you say you've got to flick through all this yeah. shit to get to the gold so just, to speak. just go to the encyclopedia britannica page about pluto you know <laughs> yeah well it's that's basically it